The duo play has been one of the NFL's most effective over the last few years, and the Rams ran it like no other in 2023. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at all the different ways the Rams ran duo in this year's version of Sean McVay's offense. Let's dive in. Here the Rams are in a tight bunch, and this is what I really consider the primary way to run duo. And that's just simply everybody blocking down and then trying to uh, get some sort of out block on the edge or uh, maybe we get to cave everybody down and we get to bounce it outside. But here we see everybody's blocking down, uh, but Puka, number 17, he doesn't have anybody in his gap. So instead of blocking down, he's gonna check his gap. And then now we're gonna get out on number 21 on the corner to open up a running lane inside for the running back. And this is what we call jab. So the duo names are fighting names, which I really like because duo is an aggressive play and this is jab. So jab, we are blocking everybody down. If we all have somebody in the gap, then the running back's gonna get the edge and it's one-on-one -on -one with the corner or any other support player. And if we have an open gap here, that's where we're going to try and get somebody out. Next is punch and punch uh, again a different kind of a jab is a kind of punch and so what punch is for me in this version of the offense is instead of getting everybody blocking down we're going to get a fold on the front side so here we can see uh, we've got the fly motion but then the tight end instead of getting some sort of combination on the end to the linebacker now we're going to get a fold block so the tight end is going to block out wide receiver is going to fold in and then with everybody else blocking down, there's our hole for the running back. So for me, this would be 13 Z punch because Puka played the Z for the Rams. Now the other primary way to run duo, in my opinion, is kick. So again, fighting terms, we've got jab, punch, and kick. The way the Rams would do this oftentimes was off of spirit motion. So you can see the tight end 87 over here, he's spirit motion across, and then now he's going to go kick out the edge defender so we're still going to get everybody blocking down and we've got that kick out on the edge. So instead of like jab where we have so many players on the front side that just blocking everybody down is going to get us to the support player with kick, you can do it to a two man surface that's really becoming a three man surface here. And then we're going to get that kick out block on the front side and that's going to open up a running lane. Now the thing with duo is that we are rarely ever going to get an explosive run. Uh, but it's very similar to wide zone in that the goal is staying on schedule. So we're going to get a lot of three, four, five, six yard runs that add up over the course of a game. And I think it pairs really well with outside zone as two primary runs, which is what Sean McVay has done for the last few years. Now, the last tag that I want to mention for duo is what I would call support. I haven't seen this in any of their playbooks, and it looks very similar to punch. But the difference for me with support and punch is that the insert or the folder isn't necessarily looking for one specific person. He's looking for the support player. Whereas with fold, he's just going to the person they would be blocking down to if it were jab. But here you can see Puka's kind of looking. He's looking, doesn't quite see the hole. He wants to see where 14 is going to go. And that's where he makes his decision. So the difference here with support and punch is that if it were punch, he would be inserting right there. There would be no read about it. He would be going straight away, but here we can see with support, he's kind of trying to figure out where he's going. 77, the left tackle would have gone a different way if in my system it were a punch. Uh, that's the difference here with support. So those are the primary ways we can run duo, uh, but it can get very tendency heavy if we only have those few ways to run it. So some of the different ways that the Rams dress it up, this is what I would call, uh, this would be 12 jab F choke. So Cooper Cup is the F, and the choke is going to be that backside insert to the minus one, and that can go for any of our zone tags as well. Uh, if you want to know what the minus one means, I do have a video on mic identification. The minus one is going to be the person backside of our identified mic, which would be the traveling safety here. So what the Rams do off of this is this is a tag that will also turn Cooper Cup into the lead blocker. So everybody else on the blocking surface is just running jab and he is going to insert to his minus one there, and that's going to be 12 jab F choke. And Sean McVay may be the best in the league at marrying different looks. 
So what looks like a backside tag that has no indication on what the actual run is, it's got no bearing on how the run succeeds for one run, is now going to turn into a lead block later on because you're going to get lulled to sleep by this action. Again, not going to be a ton of yards. A solid four-yard gain is a good duo play. Next, we have the fly motion. Now, this would be 12 jab F delta for me. So we can see we've got the fly motion away from the running play. That's what delta is for me. And this is going to be, again, something that they'll see on their zone plays. Now, once the defense starts over committing, you can see they end up getting two linebackers that are going to kill the jet. So we've got 20 coming off the edge or a safety. And then now we've got 56 also going to come off the edge. So now what they'll do is they'll come back a few plays later and they'll run a zone play to that side behind the jet motion. They'll have jet motion on the same side as the play, which I call virgin. And then we're going to end up cutting it back where those linebackers left. Again, there's always something off of every look, multiple things off of every look for Sean McVay. That is no different with duo and pairing that with their outside zone. All right, so we've seen some under center and some pistol looks from duo. We want to take a look at the gun right here. Now, duo from the gun, in my opinion, has to be a same side run. It's too downhill of a run for the running back to get lateral. It can make the combinations up front for the offensive line more difficult if those linebackers are moving horizontally. Remember the read for the running back on duo is the play side linebacker. So we need the play side linebacker or the middle linebacker. We need him to be working downhill vertically on the football field if he's moving side to side then it's going to muddy the read for the running back it's going to muddy the read for the offensive line so from the gun duo needs to be same side in my opinion let me know in the comments if you disagree so the running back is going to step over press the line of scrimmage vertically attack the linebacker see what he's going to do is he going to fill then we can bounce it if he scrapes over then the running back can see is this our running lane or is it better for us to bend all the way back and hit the duo cut back? So here we end up getting a pinch, and that's going to open up the edge for the running back. Again, we're not trying to get 20 yards here, not trying to hit a home run on duo, just trying to stay on schedule. And last one we'll take a look at here is a same side Y kick. So we've got that spirit motion right into the block on duo from the same side from the gun. I love this play. So I'm thinking about a high school team. We line up in a formation like this and a defense can almost know automatically we're going to run zone to the tight end because we've got the C-gap bubble. Now a good counter to that without having any motion is same side counter. But if we don't want to pull linemen and the Rams don't like to pull their linemen, this is a great way to be able to run that same side gap scheme without pulling a lineman and the defense doesn't have much, if any time at all, to adjust once they see this motion by the tight end. That's 0.2 seconds to recognize this motion and know that duo's coming this way. However, then we can do some play action things and slip the tight end out into the flat, or we can just run split zone behind this motion too. Parse the C's for a big gain on third down. So between under center, the pistol, the gun, having three or four different primary ways to run it, two or three different tags we can use to each of those plays. We've got plenty of different ways that duo can be a base part of an offense. It's a fantastic run for staying on schedule. Really good to pair with an outside zone running play. Outside zone is going to threaten the perimeter. Duo is going to threaten the interior. You never have to teach linemen if that's something that you want to do. You never have to teach linemen how to pull. Now, one of the motions that we saw a lot was spirit or what I've in the past called blast motion. And if you want to know more about that, click on the screen and watch this next video.